Do you know how the Iranian people trace their origins back thousands of years to ancient civilizations and powerful empires? Welcome to History Forge, where we delve into the fascinating story of the Iranians. Join us as we uncover their rich cultural heritage, resilience, and influence throughout history. Part 1 – The Dawn of Iranian Civilization The origins of the Iranian people are deeply rooted in the history of the Eurasian steppe and the broader Indo-Iranian migration patterns that shaped the cultural and ethnic landscape of ancient Central and Western Asia. The Iranian people belong to the larger Indo-European family whose linguistic and genetic footprint can be traced back to the nomadic societies of the Eurasian steppe, specifically the Andronovo culture. It is around 2000 BCE when the Indo-Iranian tribes began their journey from the steppe regions, migrating southward towards the Iranian plateau and the Indian subcontinent. This large-scale migration is a significant part of what scholars call the Indo-European migrations, which transformed the ancient world and led to the foundation of several key civilizations in South Asia and the Iranian world. The movement of the early Iranian peoples was influenced by a combination of climatic changes, resource scarcity, and perhaps, internal tribal pressures, leading to their gradual southward migration. Over time, these Indo-Iranians began to settle in the vast territories of the Iranian plateau, where their language, customs, and beliefs began to evolve distinctly from their Indo-Aryan counterparts who moved further east into South Asia. The Iranian plateau itself offered a unique environment for the early settlers. Its rugged mountain ranges, arid deserts, and fertile valleys provided both challenges and opportunities for survival. The people who settled there were nomadic herders initially, but as they adapted to the environment, they began to develop more settled forms of society which included agricultural practices, animal domestication, and the beginnings of urbanization. These early Iranians are often associated with the Proto-Iranians, a group that retained much of the cultural and linguistic traits of their steppe ancestors while slowly adapting to their new environment. The Proto-Iranian language would eventually evolve into the various Iranian dialects spoken by the Medes, Persians, and other ancient Iranian peoples. It is important to note that much of what we know about these early Iranian societies comes from linguistic reconstructions and later historical sources, such as the Avesta, the Zoroastrian sacred texts, and Greek historical accounts. Archaeological evidence, though fragmentary, also provides valuable insight into their way of life, religious practices, and technological advancements. As the Proto-Iranians settled in different parts of the plateau, they began to interact with the indigenous populations already living in the region. These populations, such as the Elamites and other pre-Iranian cultures, had established complex societies with advanced agricultural techniques, trade networks, and religious traditions. The Proto-Iranians likely assimilated some of these practices, which helped shape their evolving society. Over time, the Iranian tribes started to differentiate themselves, forming distinct identities based on geography, dialects, and political alliances. This process of differentiation eventually gave rise to the major Iranian groups, including the Medes, Persians, and Parthians, among others. The rise of the Medes as a dominant Iranian group marked a crucial point in the development of Iranian civilization. The Medes were one of the first groups to organize themselves into a cohesive political entity, establishing the first Iranian Empire in the 7th century BCE. Their rise to power was facilitated by their ability to unite various Iranian tribes under a single banner and their strategic position in northwestern Iran, which allowed them to control key trade routes and natural resources. It is from the Medes that we begin to see the emergence of distinct Iranian political and cultural traditions that would later be carried on by their successors, the Persians. The religious beliefs of the early Iranians were also deeply influenced by their steppe origins and their new environment on the Iranian plateau. Zoroastrianism, the ancient Iranian religion founded by the prophet Zoroaster, likely developed during this period, though its exact origins remain a topic of scholarly debate. Zoroastrianism introduced key theological concepts, such as the duality of good and evil, the worship of Ahura Mazda as the supreme deity, and the importance of individual moral choice, 
which would become central to Iranian religious thought for centuries to come. The early religious practices of the Iranians also involved fire worship, reverence for natural elements like water and earth, and the veneration of ancestral spirits, all of which are reflected in later Zoroastrian rituals. Another significant aspect of early Iranian civilization was their system of governance and social organization. The Iranian tribes were initially organized into kinship-based communities, with each tribe led by a chief or king who wielded considerable authority. As these tribes settled and began to form larger political entities, such as the Median Empire, their governance structures became more complex. The concept of kingship, particularly the idea of the king of kings, which later became central to Persian governance, likely has its roots in these early tribal societies. This hierarchical system of governance, combined with the influence of Zoroastrian ethics, created a unique political culture that would shape the future of Iranian civilization. Trade and interaction with neighboring regions played a crucial role in the development of early Iranian societies. The Iranian plateau was situated at the crossroads of several important trade routes, including the Silk Road, which connected the ancient world from China to the Mediterranean. This strategic location allowed the early Iranians to engage in long-distance trade with various cultures, including the Mesopotamians, Indians, and Central Asians. Through these interactions, the Iranians exchanged goods, ideas, and technologies that enriched their own civilization. By the end of the second millennium BCE, the early Iranian peoples had laid the foundations for what would become one of the most influential civilizations in world history. Their migrations, interactions with indigenous cultures, and evolving religious and political structures set the stage for the rise of the great Iranian empires that would follow in the centuries to come. The legacy of these early Iranian peoples can still be felt today in the language, culture, and traditions of modern Iran, as well as in the broader Indo-Iranian cultural sphere. Part 2. The Rise of the Medes and Persians the story of the Iranian people takes a significant turn with the rise of the Medes and Persians, two powerful Iranian tribes that would go on to shape the course of ancient history. The Medes, who settled in the northwestern part of the Iranian plateau, are credited with establishing the first Iranian empire in the early 7th century BCE. They are often regarded as the earliest Iranian group to form a cohesive political entity, uniting various tribes under their leadership and laying the foundation for what would later become a dominant force in the region. The Medes were not only skilled warriors but also adept at diplomacy, forging alliances with neighboring powers such as the Babylonians to challenge the dominance of the Assyrian Empire, which had been a significant force in the ancient Near East for centuries. Their eventual triumph over Assyria marked the beginning of the Median Empire, which, though short-lived, played a critical role in shaping the trajectory of Iranian history. The Medes' rise to power is closely tied to the leadership of King Cyaxares, who reigned from approximately 625 to 585 BCE. Under his rule, the Medes successfully expanded their territory, and Cyaxares is credited with introducing important military reforms, including the organization of the army into specialized units such as infantry, cavalry, and archers. These innovations helped the Medes achieve significant military victories, including the capture of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, in 612 BCE. The fall of Nineveh not only marked the end of Assyrian dominance but also established the Medes as a major power in the ancient world. However, despite their early successes, the Median Empire was relatively short-lived, lasting less than a century. The decline of the Medes can be attributed in part to the rise of another Iranian group, the Persians, who would go on to establish one of the greatest empires in history. The Persians, like the Medes, were an Iranian tribe that had migrated to the Iranian plateau during the Indo-Iranian migrations. They initially settled in the southwestern part of the plateau, in a region known as Pars, from which they derived their name. The early history of the Persians is closely tied to their relationship with the Medes, as they were initially subordinate to the Median kings. However, this dynamic changed dramatically with the rise of Cyrus the Great, one of the most renowned figures in ancient history. Cyrus the Great, who founded the Achaemenid Empire in 550 BCE, is widely regarded as one of the most successful and enlightened rulers of the ancient world. 
Born around 600 BCE in the city of Anchan, Cyrus was a member of the Achaemenid dynasty, which traced its lineage back to the legendary Persian king Achaemenes. Under his leadership, the Persians would break free from Median dominance and go on to conquer vast territories, creating an empire that stretched from the Aegean Sea in the west to the Indus River in the east. Cyrus's conquest of the Median Empire was achieved through a combination of military prowess and diplomacy. Rather than engaging in a long and protracted war with the Medes, Cyrus capitalized on internal divisions within the Median court and quickly gained the support of key Median factions, allowing him to seize power with relatively little bloodshed. The fall of the Medes to the Persians marked the beginning of a new era in Iranian history, as the Achaemenid Empire became the dominant power in the ancient world. Cyrus the Great is remembered not only for his military achievements but also for his enlightened policies towards the peoples he conquered. He is often credited with creating the world's first human rights document, known as the Cyrus Cylinder, which outlined his policies of religious tolerance and protection of minority rights. This approach to governance was revolutionary for its time, as most ancient empires relied on brute force and coercion to maintain control over their subjects. Instead, Cyrus allowed the various peoples of his empire to retain their customs, religions, and local rulers, as long as they pledged loyalty to him and paid tribute to the Persian government. The Achaemenid Empire under Cyrus the Great and his successors, including Cambyses II and Darius I, would go on to become one of the largest and most powerful empires in history. At its height, the empire encompassed vast territories across Asia, Africa, and Europe, including modern-day Iran, Iraq, Egypt, Turkey, and parts of Greece and India. The administrative structure of the empire was highly advanced for its time, with a system of satrapies, or provinces, each governed by a satrap appointed by the king. This system allowed the empire to efficiently manage its vast and diverse territories, ensuring that local rulers had a degree of autonomy while still maintaining loyalty to the central government. Darius I, who ruled from 522 to 486 BCE, is often credited with further consolidating and expanding the empire that Cyrus had established. He introduced significant administrative and economic reforms, including the construction of an extensive road system, which facilitated trade and communication across the empire. The most famous of these roads was the Royal Road which stretched from Sardis in Asia Minor to Susa, one of the empire's capitals in modern-day Iran. This road system not only helped maintain the unity of the empire but also fostered cultural exchange and economic prosperity. The Achaemenid Empire also saw the flourishing of Persian art, architecture, and culture, much of which was influenced by the various peoples and cultures that the Persians had incorporated into their empire. The capital cities of Persepolis, Susa, and Pasargadi became centers of political, cultural, and religious life, showcasing the grandeur of Persian civilization. The Achaemenids were also great patrons of the arts, commissioning intricate reliefs, sculptures, and monumental architecture that celebrated their empire's achievements and reflected their vision of a diverse and harmonious world. The rise of the Persians under Cyrus the Great and Darius I marked the beginning of one of the most remarkable chapters in Iranian history. The Achaemenid Empire not only laid the foundation for future Iranian empires but also left an enduring legacy on the broader ancient world. The Persians' administrative innovations, military strategies, and cultural achievements influenced subsequent empires, including the Roman Empire and later Islamic Caliphates. The story of the Medes and Persians is not just a tale of conquest and empire building, but also one of cultural synthesis, as they absorbed and integrated the traditions and customs of the peoples they ruled over, creating a rich and diverse civilization. In this part of Iranian history, we see the emergence of a distinct Iranian identity that would continue to evolve over the centuries, shaped by the interactions between the various peoples and cultures of the region. The legacy of the Medes and Persians is still felt today, not only in Iran but throughout the world, as their contributions to governance, culture, and human rights continue to resonate in modern times. Part 3, The Achaemenid Empire, Persia's First Great Empire. The Achaemenid Empire, often referred to as the First Persian Empire, represents a critical chapter in the history of Iran and the ancient world at large. You said? Continue. ChatGPT said. 
ChatGPT. The Achaemenid Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BCE, stands as one of the largest and most influential empires of the ancient world. Stretching from the Aegean Sea in the west to the Indus River in the east, this vast empire not only demonstrated remarkable military power but also introduced innovative forms of governance that would influence future civilizations. Under the leadership of Cyrus and his successors, the Achaemenids created a model of imperial administration that emphasized cultural tolerance, economic integration, and centralized control, all while respecting the customs and traditions of the diverse populations under their rule. The foundation of the Achaemenid Empire was laid during a period of upheaval, as Cyrus the Great overthrew the Median Empire and quickly expanded his control over neighboring territories. After defeating the Medes, Cyrus turned his attention to the powerful Lydian kingdom in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. In 547 BCE, Cyrus famously defeated Croesus, the wealthy king of Lydia, bringing the prosperous region under Persian control. The fall of Lydia not only enriched the Achaemenid treasury but also granted Persia access to important trade routes and natural resources, further strengthening the growing empire. Cyrus's most notable conquest, however, came in 539 BCE when he captured Babylon, one of the greatest cities of the ancient world. The conquest of Babylon is remembered not just for its military significance but also for Cyrus's relatively lenient and humane treatment of the conquered people. Unlike many rulers of his time, who would have likely sacked the city and imposed harsh rule, Cyrus entered Babylon peacefully and portrayed himself as a liberator, respected by both the Babylonians and the exiled Jewish population living there. It was during this time that Cyrus issued the famous decree, recorded on the Cyrus Cylinder, allowing the Jewish exiles to return to their homeland in Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. This act of kindness and religious tolerance earned him a lasting legacy in Jewish and world history. Cyrus's policies of religious tolerance and respect for local customs became hallmarks of Achaemenid rule. Rather than imposing a single culture or religion on his vast empire, Cyrus allowed the peoples of different regions to maintain their own beliefs and ways of life, as long as they paid tribute and remained loyal to the Persian government. This flexible approach to governance contributed to the stability and longevity of the Achaemenid Empire as it allowed for the peaceful coexistence of a wide variety of ethnic and religious groups within its borders. The Persian administrative system was highly organized, with a central bureaucracy overseeing the empire's many provinces, or satrapies. Each satrapy was governed by a satrap, a regional governor who was responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining order, and ensuring the security of the province. Darius I, one of Cyrus's successors, is often credited with refining and expanding this system of administration. Coming to power in 522 BCE after a period of political instability, Darius set about consolidating and strengthening the empire's governance structures. He divided the empire into 20 satrapies, each with its own satrap, military commander, and tax collector, ensuring that no single individual could amass too much power in any given region. This system of checks and balances helped to maintain the unity of the vast empire and prevent rebellion among the provinces. Darius also introduced a standardized system of taxation and implemented a uniform currency, the Daric, which facilitated trade and commerce across the empire's vast territories. One of Darius's most enduring legacies was the construction of an extensive network of roads that connected the far-flung regions of the empire. The most famous of these was the Royal Road, which stretched more than 1,500 miles from Sardis in Asia Minor to Susa in Persia. This road system allowed for the rapid movement of troops, goods, and information, greatly enhancing the efficiency of the empire's administration. Along the Royal Road, Relay stations were established where couriers could exchange horses and continue their journey, ensuring that messages could be delivered across the empire in a matter of days. This communication network was one of the most advanced of its time and helped to maintain the cohesion of the empire. Under Darius's rule, the Achaemenid Empire reached its greatest territorial extent, encompassing lands from Egypt and the Balkans in the west to the Indus Valley in the east. Despite its vast size, the empire remained remarkably stable, thanks in large part to the administrative and infrastructural innovations introduced by Darius and his predecessors. 
the empire's diverse population included Persians, Medes, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and many others, all of whom contributed to the rich cultural and economic life of the empire. The Persian Empire was a melting pot of cultures, where art, science, and philosophy flourished. The Persians were also known for their monumental architecture, exemplified by the construction of the royal capital at Persepolis. Persepolis, built by Darius and his successors, became a symbol of Persian imperial power and grandeur. The city was adorned with magnificent palaces, towering columns, and intricate reliefs depicting scenes of tribute-bearing delegations from across the empire. The architectural style of Persepolis blended Persian, Mesopotamian, and Egyptian influences, reflecting the diverse cultural heritage of the Achaemenid Empire. The city was not only a political and administrative center but also a ceremonial one, where the Persian kings would receive emissaries and display their power and wealth. The ruins of Persepolis still stand today as a testament to the artistic and engineering achievements of the ancient Persians. Religion also played a significant role in the life of the Achaemenid Empire, with Zoroastrianism being the dominant faith. Zoroastrianism, founded by the prophet Zoroaster, taught the dualistic belief in the ongoing struggle between the forces of good, represented by Ahura Mazda, and the forces of evil, embodied by Angra Mainyu. Zoroastrianism's emphasis on moral choice, justice, and the eventual triumph of good over evil resonated with the Persian kings, who saw themselves as champions of order and justice in the world. The Zoroastrian faith also influenced the administrative and judicial systems of the empire, with the Persian kings positioning themselves as the guardians of truth and righteousness. While Zoroastrianism was the state religion, the Persian kings were generally tolerant of other faiths, allowing the worship of local gods and the continuation of religious traditions throughout the empire. The Achaemenid Empire's remarkable achievements in governance, culture, and architecture were not without challenges. Throughout its existence, the empire faced numerous threats, both internal and external. Rebellions periodically erupted in the provinces, and the empire's borders were constantly tested by rival powers. One of the most significant challenges to Persian rule came in the form of the Greek city-states, which fiercely resisted Persian attempts to expand into Europe. The Greco-Persian Wars, which spanned much of the early 5th century BCE, saw the Persian Empire clash with the Greek city-states of Athens and Sparta, among others. Although the Persians initially succeeded in subjugating parts of Greece, including the city of Ionia, they were ultimately defeated at the famous battles of Marathon and Salamis. These defeats marked the beginning of the decline of Persian influence in Europe and set the stage for future conflicts with the Greeks. Despite these setbacks, the Achaemenid Empire remained a dominant power in the ancient world for nearly two centuries. Its legacy continued to influence subsequent empires, including the Parthians, Sasanians, and even the Islamic Caliphates that followed. The administrative innovations, cultural achievements, and policies of religious tolerance introduced by the Achaemenids left an indelible mark on the region and continue to shape Iranian identity and culture today. As the first great Persian empire, the Achaemenid Empire set the stage for Iran's long and illustrious history, establishing the foundations of governance, culture, and religion that would endure for millennia. Part 3, The Achaemenid Empire, Persia's First Great Empire. The Achaemenid Empire, often referred to as the First Persian Empire, represents a critical chapter in the history of Iran and the ancient world at large. The Achaemenid Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BCE, stands as one of the largest and most influential empires of the ancient world. Stretching from the Aegean Sea in the west to the Indus River in the east, this vast empire not only demonstrated remarkable military power but also introduced innovative forms of governance that would influence future civilizations. Under the leadership of Cyrus and his successors, the Achaemenids created a model of imperial administration that emphasized cultural tolerance, economic integration, and centralized control, all while respecting the customs and traditions of the diverse populations under their rule. The foundation of the Achaemenid Empire was laid during a period of upheaval, as Cyrus the Great overthrew the Median Empire and quickly expanded his control over neighboring territories. 
After defeating the Medes, Cyrus turned his attention to the powerful Lydian kingdom in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. In 547 BCE, Cyrus famously defeated Croesus, the wealthy king of Lydia, bringing the prosperous region under Persian control. The fall of Lydia not only enriched the Achaemenid treasury but also granted Persia access to important trade routes and natural resources, further strengthening the growing empire. Cyrus's most notable conquest, however, came in 539 BCE when he captured Babylon, one of the greatest cities of the ancient world. The conquest of Babylon is remembered not just for its military significance but also for Cyrus's relatively lenient and humane treatment of the conquered people. Unlike many rulers of his time, who would have likely sacked the city and imposed harsh rule, Cyrus entered Babylon peacefully and portrayed himself as a liberator, respected by both the Babylonians and the exiled Jewish population living there. It was during this time that Cyrus issued the famous decree, recorded on the Cyrus Cylinder, allowing the Jewish exiles to return to their homeland in Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. This act of kindness and religious tolerance earned him a lasting legacy in Jewish and world history. Cyrus's policies of religious tolerance and respect for local customs became hallmarks of Achaemenid rule. Rather than imposing a single culture or religion on his vast empire, Cyrus allowed the peoples of different regions to maintain their own beliefs and ways of life, as long as they paid tribute and remained loyal to the Persian government. This flexible approach to governance contributed to the stability and longevity of the Achaemenid Empire, as it allowed for the peaceful coexistence of a wide variety of ethnic and religious groups within its borders. The Persian administrative system was highly organized, with a central bureaucracy overseeing the empire's many provinces, or satrapies. Each satrapy was governed by a satrap, a regional governor who was responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining order, and ensuring the security of the province. Darius I, one of Cyrus's successors, is often credited with refining and expanding this system of administration. Coming to power in 522 BCE after a period of political instability, Darius set about consolidating and strengthening the empire's governance structures. He divided the empire into 20 satrapies, each with its own satrap, military commander, and tax collector, ensuring that no single individual could amass too much power in any given region. This system of checks and balances helped to maintain the unity of the vast empire and prevent rebellion among the provinces. Darius also introduced a standardized system of taxation and implemented a uniform currency, the Daric, which facilitated trade and commerce across the empire's vast territories. One of Darius's most enduring legacies was the construction of an extensive network of roads that connected the far-flung regions of the empire. The most famous of these was the Royal Road, which stretched more than 1,500 miles from Sardis in Asia Minor to Susa in Persia. This road system allowed for the rapid movement of troops, goods, and information, greatly enhancing the efficiency of the empire's administration. Along the Royal Road, relay stations were established where couriers could exchange horses and continue their journey, ensuring that messages could be delivered across the empire in a matter of days. This communication network was one of the most advanced of its time and helped to maintain the cohesion of the empire. The Achaemenid Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BCE, stands as one of the largest and most influential empires of the ancient world. Stretching from the Aegean Sea in the west to the Indus River in the east, this vast empire not only demonstrated remarkable military power but also introduced innovative forms of governance that would influence future civilizations. Under the leadership of Cyrus and his successors, the Achaemenids created a model of imperial administration that emphasized cultural tolerance, economic integration, and centralized control, all while respecting the customs and traditions of the diverse populations under their rule. The foundation of the Achaemenid Empire was laid during a period of upheaval, as Cyrus the Great overthrew the Median Empire and quickly expanded his control over neighboring territories. After defeating the Medes, Cyrus turned his attention to the powerful Lydian kingdom in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. In 547 BCE, Cyrus famously defeated Croesus, the wealthy king of Lydia, bringing the prosperous region under Persian control. 
The fall of Lydia not only enriched the Achaemenid treasury but also granted Persia access to important trade routes and natural resources, further strengthening the growing empire. Cyrus's most notable conquest, however, came in 539 BCE when he captured Babylon, one of the greatest cities of the ancient world. The conquest of Babylon is remembered not just for its military significance but also for Cyrus's relatively lenient and humane treatment of the conquered people. Unlike many rulers of his time, who would have likely sacked the city and imposed harsh rule, Cyrus entered Babylon peacefully and portrayed himself as a liberator, respected by both the Babylonians and the exiled Jewish population living there. It was during this time that Cyrus issued the famous decree, recorded on the Cyrus Cylinder, allowing the Jewish exiles to return to their homeland in Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. This act of kindness and religious tolerance earned him a lasting legacy in Jewish and world history. Cyrus's policies of religious tolerance and respect for local customs became hallmarks of Achaemenid rule. Rather than imposing a single culture or religion on his vast empire, Cyrus allowed the peoples of different regions to maintain their own beliefs and ways of life, as long as they paid tribute and remained loyal to the Persian government. This flexible approach to governance contributed to the stability and longevity of the Achaemenid Empire, as it allowed for the peaceful coexistence of a wide variety of ethnic and religious groups within its borders. The Persian administrative system was highly organized, with a central bureaucracy overseeing the empire's many provinces, or satrapies. Each satrapy was governed by a satrap, a regional governor who was responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining order, and ensuring the security of the province. Darius I, one of Cyrus's successors, is often credited with refining and expanding this system of administration. Coming to power in 522 BCE after a period of political instability, Darius set about consolidating and strengthening the empire's governance structures. He divided the empire into twenty satrapies, each with its own satrap, military commander, and tax collector, ensuring that no single individual could amass too much power in any given region. This system of checks and balances helped to maintain the unity of the vast empire and prevent rebellion among the provinces. Darius also introduced a standardized system of taxation and implemented a uniform currency, the Daric, which facilitated trade and commerce across the empire's vast territories. One of Darius's most enduring legacies was the construction of an extensive network of roads that connected the far-flung regions of the empire. The most famous of these was the Royal Road, which stretched more than 1,500 miles from Sardis in Asia Minor to Susa in Persia. This road system allowed for the rapid movement of troops, goods, and information, greatly enhancing the efficiency of the empire's administration. Along the Royal Road, relay stations were established where couriers could exchange horses and continue their journey, ensuring that messages could be delivered across the empire in a matter of days. This communication network was one of the most advanced of its time and helped to maintain the cohesion of the empire. Under Darius's rule, the Achaemenid Empire reached its greatest territorial extent, encompassing lands from Egypt and the Balkans in the west to the Indus Valley in the east. Despite its vast size, the empire remained remarkably stable, thanks in large part to the administrative and infrastructural innovations introduced by Darius and his predecessors. The empire's diverse population included Persians, Medes, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and many others, all of whom contributed to the rich cultural and economic life of the empire. The Persian Empire was a melting pot of cultures, where art, science, and philosophy flourished. The Persians were also known for their monumental architecture, exemplified by the construction of the royal capital at Persepolis. Persepolis, built by Darius and his successors, became a symbol of Persian imperial power and grandeur. The city was adorned with magnificent palaces, towering columns, and intricate reliefs depicting scenes of tribute-bearing delegations from across the empire. The architectural style of Persepolis blended Persian, Mesopotamian, and Egyptian influences, reflecting the diverse cultural heritage of the Achaemenid Empire. The city was not only a political and administrative center but also a ceremonial one, where the Persian kings would receive emissaries and display their power and wealth. The ruins of Persepolis still stand today as a testament to the artistic and engineering achievements of the ancient Persians.
Religion also played a significant role in the life of the Achaemenid Empire, with Zoroastrianism being the dominant faith. Zoroastrianism, founded by the prophet Zoroaster, taught the dualistic belief in the ongoing struggle between the forces of good, represented by Ahura Mazda, and the forces of evil, embodied by Angra Mainyu. Zoroastrianism's emphasis on moral choice, justice, and the eventual triumph of good over evil resonated with the Persian kings, who saw themselves as champions of order and justice in the world. The Zoroastrian faith also influenced the administrative and judicial systems of the empire, with the Persian kings positioning themselves as the guardians of truth and righteousness. While Zoroastrianism was the state religion, the Persian kings were generally tolerant of other faiths, allowing the worship of local gods and the continuation of religious traditions throughout the empire. The Achaemenid Empire's remarkable achievements in governance, culture, and architecture were not without challenges. Throughout its existence, the empire faced numerous threats, both internal and external. Rebellions periodically erupted in the provinces, and the empire's borders were constantly tested by rival powers. One of the most significant challenges to Persian rule came in the form of the Greek city-states, which fiercely resisted Persian attempts to expand into Europe. The Greco-Persian Wars, which spanned much of the early 5th century BCE, saw the Persian Empire clash with the Greek city-states of Athens and Sparta, among others. Although the Persians initially succeeded in subjugating parts of Greece, including the city of Ionia, they were ultimately defeated at the famous battles of Marathon and Salamis. These defeats marked the beginning of the decline of Persian influence in Europe and set the stage for future conflicts with the Greeks. Despite these setbacks, the Achaemenid Empire remained a dominant power in the ancient world for nearly two centuries. Its legacy continued to influence subsequent empires, including the Parthians, Sasanians, and even the Islamic Caliphates that followed. The administrative innovations, cultural achievements, and policies of religious tolerance introduced by the Achaemenids left an indelible mark on the region and continue to shape Iranian identity and culture today. As the first great Persian empire, the Achaemenid Empire set the stage for Iran's long and illustrious history, establishing the foundations of governance, culture, and religion that would endure for millennia. Part 4 – The Influence of Zoroastrianism Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, played a crucial role in shaping the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Iran. Did the religious ideas of Zoroaster Zoroastrian concepts of good versus evil, the afterlife, and the final judgment left a lasting impact on other major world religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Many scholars believe that Zoroastrianism's dualistic worldview, as well as its eschatological teachings about the end times and the final battle between good and evil, influenced the development of these Abrahamic faiths. For example, the idea of a messianic figure who would come to bring about the final triumph of good, a concept present in both Christianity and Islam, bears similarities to the Zoroastrian belief in Saoshiant, the savior who will lead the forces of light in the final battle against evil. The decline of the Achaemenid Empire did not diminish the influence of Zoroastrianism. Even after the empire fell to Alexander the Great in 330 BCE and later came under the control of the Hellenistic Seleucid Empire, Zoroastrianism remained a vital part of Iranian identity. It would experience a resurgence during the Parthian and Sasanian periods, particularly under the Sasanian rulers who re-established Zoroastrianism as the state religion and sought to restore many of the traditions and customs of the Achaemenid era. Under the Sasanians, Zoroastrianism became more codified and institutionalized, with a formal priesthood and a clearer hierarchy within the religion. The Avesta was compiled during this time, preserving the teachings of Zoroaster for future generations. Despite the rise of Islam following the Arab conquest of Iran in the 7th century CE, Zoroastrianism continued to play a role in the cultural and spiritual life of the Iranian people. Although many Iranians converted to Islam, particularly under pressure from the new rulers, Zoroastrian communities persisted in various parts of the region. The Zoroastrians who remained in Iran were known as the Parsis and eventually migrated to India, where they established thriving communities that still exist today. The Zoroastrians of India, particularly in the region of Gujarat, 
became known for their contributions to trade, industry, and culture, all while preserving their ancient religious traditions. Today, Zoroastrianism is a minority religion, but its legacy continues to shape the cultural and religious history of Iran and the broader world. The impact of Zoroastrianism on Iranian identity cannot be overstated. Even after the spread of Islam, many Zoroastrian customs, festivals, and values were absorbed into the broader Iranian culture. For example, Nowruz, the Persian New Year, which has its roots in Zoroastrianism, remains one of the most important cultural celebrations in modern Iran. The festival, which marks the arrival of spring and the renewal of life, is celebrated not just in Iran but throughout the Persian-speaking world and in many parts of Central Asia. This continuity of tradition highlights the enduring influence of Zoroastrianism on Iranian cultural identity. In modern times, Zoroastrianism continues to attract interest as one of the world's oldest monotheistic faiths. Its emphasis on moral choice, the eternal struggle between good and evil, and the pursuit of truth and righteousness resonate with many contemporary spiritual seekers. The teachings of Zoroaster, though ancient, offer timeless wisdom about the importance of living in harmony with the natural world and striving to create a just and compassionate society. For Iranians, Zoroastrianism remains a key part of their cultural heritage, a reminder of their long and storied history as one of the world's great civilizations. Part 5 – The Fall of the Achaemenid Empire and the Hellenistic Period The Achaemenid Empire, which had stood as the largest and most powerful empire of its time, faced its downfall in 330 BCE with the arrival of Alexander the Great. The fall of the Achaemenid Empire in 330 BCE marked a dramatic shift in the political and cultural landscape of the ancient world. Alexander the Great, the young Macedonian king who had already conquered much of Greece and the eastern Mediterranean, set his sights on Persia, aiming to bring the vast and wealthy empire under his control. His campaign against the Persians began in 334 BCE when he crossed the Hellespont into Asia Minor, starting a series of battles that would ultimately lead to the fall of the Persian Empire. Alexander's military genius, combined with his ability to inspire loyalty among his troops, allowed him to defeat the larger and more established Achaemenid forces, led by Darius III, in a series of decisive battles. The Battle of Issus in 333 BCE and the subsequent Battle of Gorgomela in 331 BCE were two of the most significant engagements of the campaign. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Alexander's use of strategic formations and his personal leadership on the battlefield overwhelmed the Persian forces. Darius III fled the battlefield at Gorgomela, and his defeat marked the beginning of the end for the Achaemenid Empire. Alexander pursued Darius across the empire and although Darius attempted to rally support for a counteroffensive, he was eventually betrayed and murdered by his own generals. With Darius's death, the Achaemenid Empire effectively ceased to exist, and Alexander assumed the title of King of Kings, the traditional title of Persian rulers. After the fall of the Achaemenid Empire, Alexander embarked on a campaign to consolidate his control over Persian territories. He adopted many of the administrative practices of the Persians, including the satrap system, where local governors ruled over provinces but remained loyal to the central authority. Alexander's goal was not simply to conquer Persia but to create a unified empire that blended Greek and Persian cultures. He famously adopted Persian dress and customs, married Persian noblewomen, and encouraged his soldiers to do the same, in an effort to foster a sense of unity between the Greek and Persian peoples. This policy of fusion, known as Hellenization, sought to integrate the cultures of the conquered territories with Greek traditions, creating a new, hybrid civilization. The period following Alexander's conquests is known as the Hellenistic period, a time of significant cultural and intellectual exchange between East and West. Although Alexander's empire fragmented after his death in 323 BCE, his legacy endured through the successor kingdoms, or the Diadochi, that arose from the remnants of his empire. The most prominent of these kingdoms in Iran was the Seleucid Empire, founded by one of Alexander's generals, Seleucus I Nicator. The Seleucid dynasty, which ruled much of the former Achaemenid territory, continued Alexander's policy of cultural integration, fostering the spread of Greek art, architecture, and philosophy throughout the region. However, 
Despite the spread of Hellenistic culture, Persian traditions and beliefs persisted, creating a dynamic and complex cultural environment. The Seleucids faced numerous challenges in ruling such a vast and diverse empire. They inherited the administrative system of the Achaemenids but struggled to maintain control over the far-flung territories, particularly in the eastern regions, where local rulers often exercised a significant degree of autonomy. In many parts of Iran, particularly in the more remote areas, Zoroastrian religious practices and Persian cultural traditions remained strong, despite the influence of Hellenistic culture. The Seleucids attempted to maintain their dominance by founding Greek-style cities, known as polis, throughout the region, which served as centers of administration, commerce, and Hellenistic culture. These cities, such as Seleucia on the Tigris and Anch, became important hubs of cultural exchange and helped to spread Greek ideas across the empire. However, the Seleucid Empire was not destined to last. The vastness of the territories, combined with constant pressure from external threats such as the growing power of the Roman Republic in the west and the Parthians in the east, led to the gradual decline of Seleucid control over Iran. By the 2nd century BCE, the Parthian Empire, founded by the Arsacid dynasty, had emerged as a powerful force in the region and began to challenge Seleucid authority. The Parthians, originally a nomadic people from the northeastern Iranian steppes, successfully overthrew the Seleucids in Iran, marking the beginning of a new chapter in Iranian history. The rise of the Parthians did not mark the end of Hellenistic influence in Iran, however. Greek culture continued to thrive in many parts of the region, particularly in the cities founded by the Seleucids, where Greek art, architecture, and language remained prominent. In fact, the Parthians themselves adopted many elements of Hellenistic culture, blending them with traditional Iranian practices to create a unique and hybrid civilization. This fusion of Greek and Persian elements was particularly evident in Parthian art and coinage, which often featured Greek-style imagery alongside traditional Iranian symbols. The Parthian kings, while positioning themselves as successors to the Achaemenid rulers, also maintained ties to the Hellenistic world, engaging in diplomatic and cultural exchanges with both the Romans and the Greeks. Despite the cultural blending that occurred during the Hellenistic period, many aspects of traditional Persian culture remained resilient. Zoroastrianism, in particular, continued to be practiced widely throughout Iran, even as Greek religious and philosophical ideas gained influence. The fire temples, central to Zoroastrian worship, continued to burn throughout the Hellenistic period, symbolizing the endurance of Iranian religious traditions. Additionally, Persian literature and oral traditions, which had been preserved and passed down through generations, continued to influence the cultural identity of the Iranian people. The Hellenistic period in Iran was one of both continuity and change. While Greek culture made significant inroads into the region, influencing everything from art and architecture to governance and religion, the fundamental aspects of Persian identity remained intact. The blending of Greek and Persian traditions during this period laid the groundwork for the cultural diversity that would characterize Iranian civilization in the centuries to come. As the Parthian Empire rose to power and the Seleucids faded into history, the legacy of the Achaemenid Empire and the influence of Hellenism would continue to shape the cultural and political landscape of Iran. In many ways, the Hellenistic period can be seen as a time of transition for Iran. The fall of the Achaemenid Empire and the arrival of Alexander the Great disrupted the traditional power structures of the region, but it also opened the door to new cultural and intellectual influences. Greek philosophy, science, and art found a receptive audience in Iran, and the interaction between Greek and Persian cultures produced a rich and diverse civilization. At the same time, the persistence of Zoroastrianism and the resilience of Persian traditions ensured that the core elements of Iranian identity were not lost. This dynamic interplay between continuity and change is one of the defining features of the Hellenistic period in Iran, and it set the stage for the cultural and political developments that would follow in the Parthian and Sasanian eras. The fall of the Achaemenid Empire and the subsequent Hellenistic period represent a crucial turning point in the history of Iran. It was a time when the Iranian world was opened up to new ideas and influences, but it was also a period when the foundations of Iranian culture and identity were reinforced. 
The legacy of this period can still be seen today in the art, architecture, and cultural practices of modern Iran, as well as in the enduring influence of Zoroastrianism and the values of justice, truth, and righteousness that have shaped Iranian civilization for millennia. Part 6 The Parthian and Sasanian Empires with the decline of the Seleucid Empire and the rise of the Parthians in the 3rd century BCE, a new era of Iranian history began. The Parthian Empire, founded by the Arsacid dynasty, marked a return to Iranian control over the region after the period of Hellenistic dominance under the Seleucids. The Parthians were originally a nomadic people from the northeastern Iranian steppes, but under the leadership of Arsaces I, they established a powerful empire that would last for nearly 500 years, from around 247 BCE to 224 CE. The Parthians are often credited with restoring Iranian sovereignty and identity, while also blending elements of the Greek culture they inherited from the Seleucids with their own Persian traditions. This blending of cultures created a unique and dynamic civilization that played a crucial role in the ancient world, particularly as a rival to the Roman Empire. One of the defining features of the Parthian Empire was its decentralized form of government. Unlike the highly centralized Achaemenid Empire, the Parthians adopted a more feudal system of governance, in which local rulers, known as satraps, held significant power and autonomy within their regions. These local rulers often governed hereditary territories and were responsible for raising troops and collecting taxes for the central government, but they were largely free to manage their own affairs. This system allowed the Parthians to maintain control over their vast and diverse empire, which stretched from the Euphrates River in the west to the Indus Valley in the east, without the need for a highly centralized bureaucracy. However, this decentralization also created challenges, as the central government often had limited control over the more distant provinces, leading to periodic rebellions and internal strife. The Parthians are perhaps best known for their military prowess, particularly their use of cavalry. The Parthian army was composed primarily of horse archers and heavily armored cavalry, known as cataphracts, who were capable of devastating enemy forces with their speed, mobility, and firepower. The Parthian tactic of feigned retreat, in which their horse archers would pretend to flee and then turn and fire upon their pursuing enemies, became legendary and was highly effective against both Roman and Greek armies. This tactic, known as the Parthian shot, allowed the Parthians to engage in hit-and-run attacks that frustrated and exhausted their opponents. The most famous example of Parthian military success came during the Battle of Kahi in 53 BCE, when a Parthian army decisively defeated a much larger Roman force led by the general Crassus. The Parthians used their superior cavalry tactics to encircle and destroy the Roman legions, killing Crassus and capturing thousands of Roman soldiers. This victory not only solidified the Parthians' reputation as formidable warriors but also marked the beginning of a long and contentious rivalry between the Parthian and Roman empires. Over the next several centuries, the two powers would engage in numerous conflicts, with control of the territories between them, particularly Mesopotamia and Armenia, frequently changing hands. Despite their military success and the long duration of their empire, the Parthians faced several internal challenges that eventually led to their downfall. The decentralized nature of their government often made it difficult for the Arsacid kings to assert control over rebellious satraps and maintain unity within the empire. Additionally, the Parthians were constantly pressured by external forces, particularly the Romans in the west and nomadic groups from Central Asia in the east. By the early 3rd century CE, the Parthian Empire had weakened significantly, and in 224 CE, it was overthrown by a new Iranian dynasty, the Sasanians. The Sasanian Empire, founded by Ardashir I, marked a new chapter in Iranian history. The Sasanians sought to revive the glory of the Achaemenid Empire and re-establish a centralized, powerful state that would rival the Roman Empire. Under Sasanian rule, Zoroastrianism became the official state religion, and the Sasanian kings positioned themselves as the guardians of the faith, promoting the construction of fire temples and the codification of Zoroastrian religious text. This close relationship between the Sasanian state and Zoroastrianism helped to solidify the cultural and religious identity of the Iranian people during this period. 
The Sasanian Empire, like its predecessors, was a major center of culture, art, and learning. Sasanian art and architecture were heavily influenced by both Achaemenid and Parthian traditions, but they also incorporated new elements, creating a distinctive style that would have a lasting impact on Iranian culture. The Sasanian kings were great patrons of the arts, commissioning elaborate reliefs, sculptures, and monumental buildings that celebrated their rule and the greatness of the empire. The ruins of Sasanian palaces, such as those at Ctesiphon and Bishapur, still stand today as testament to the grandeur and sophistication of the empire. One of the most significant achievements of the Sasanian Empire was its role as a center of intellectual and scientific activity. The Sasanians established institutions of learning that attracted scholars from across the empire and beyond, particularly in the fields of medicine, astronomy, and philosophy. The Academy of Gondishapur, in particular, became one of the most important centers of learning in the ancient world, where Greek, Indian, and Persian knowledge was exchanged and synthesized. This intellectual flourishing helped to preserve and transmit ancient knowledge to later civilizations, particularly the Islamic caliphates that followed the fall of the Sasanian Empire. The Sasanian Empire, like the Parthians before them, engaged in a long and often bitter rivalry with the Roman, and later Byzantine, Empire. The two powers frequently clashed over control of key territories in Mesopotamia, Armenia, and the Caucasus, with both sides achieving victories and suffering defeats over the centuries. The Sasanian king Shapa I famously captured the Roman Emperor Valerian in 260 CE, a humiliation for Rome that underscored the strength and resilience of the Sasanian military. Despite these victories, the constant wars with Rome, combined with internal struggles and external pressures, gradually weakened the Sasanian Empire. By the 7th century CE, the Sasanian Empire was in decline, facing increasing pressure from both the Byzantine Empire and nomadic invaders from Central Asia. The final blow to the Sasanian Empire came in the form of the Arab Muslim conquests in the 630s and 640s. The rapid expansion of the Islamic Caliphate, driven by the unification of Arab tribes under the banner of Islam, overwhelmed the weakened Sasanian forces. In 651 CE, the last Sasanian king, Yazdegerd III, was defeated, and the Sasanian Empire came to an end, marking the beginning of a new era in Iranian history. The fall of the Sasanian Empire marked a turning point in the history of Iran. With the spread of Islam, the religious and cultural landscape of Iran began to change dramatically. While Zoroastrianism remained an important part of Iranian identity for many centuries, Islam eventually became the dominant religion, and Persian culture adapted to the new Islamic context. However, the legacy of the Parthian and Sasanian empires lived on in many aspects of Iranian culture, from art and architecture to legal and administrative systems. The Parthian and Sasanian periods represent a time of great cultural and political achievement for Iran. These two empires restored Iranian sovereignty after the period of Hellenistic dominance, and they helped to preserve and promote the unique cultural and religious identity of the Iranian people. The achievements of the Parthians and Sasanians, particularly in the fields of governance, military strategy, and intellectual inquiry, laid the groundwork for the later Islamic civilization that would emerge in Iran. Their contributions to Iranian culture, particularly the promotion of Zoroastrianism and the blending of Persian and Hellenistic traditions, continue to influence Iran's cultural identity to this day. Part 7. The Arab Conquest and the Introduction of Islam The Arab Conquest of Iran in the 7th century CE marked one of the most transformative events in Iranian history. The Arab Conquest of Iran in the 7th century CE brought about a profound transformation in the political, religious, and cultural landscape of the region. This period marked the fall of the Sasanian Empire and the introduction of Islam to the Iranian plateau, which would have a lasting impact on the history and identity of the Iranian people. The rapid expansion of the Islamic Caliphate, which began after the death of the Prophet Muhammad in 632 CE, swept through the Arabian Peninsula and into the surrounding regions, including Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Persia. The Sasanian Empire, already weakened by decades of warfare with the Byzantine Empire and internal strife, was ill-prepared to withstand the military prowess and religious zeal of the Arab armies. 
The key turning point in the Arab conquest of Iran came with the Battle of Al-Qadisiyya in 636 CE. This battle, fought near the banks of the Euphrates River in present-day Iraq, saw the Arab Muslim forces decisively defeat the Sasanian army. The defeat at Al-Qadisiyya opened the gates to the heartland of the Sasanian Empire, and over the next few years, Arab forces continued to advance deeper into Persian territory. In 637 CE, the city of Ctesiphon, the Sasanian capital, fell to the Arab invaders, marking the effective collapse of centralized Sasanian power. The final blow to the Sasanian Empire came in 651 CE with the death of Yazdegerd III, the last Sasanian king. After a series of failed attempts to rally his forces and resist the Arab advance, Yazdegerd was betrayed by local allies and killed while fleeing through Central Asia. With his death, the Sasanian Empire came to an end, and the entirety of Iran fell under the control of the expanding Islamic Caliphate. The conquest of Persia was not merely a political or military event, it also signaled a profound religious and cultural shift that would shape the future of Iran. The introduction of Islam to Iran fundamentally altered the religious landscape of the region. Before the Arab conquest, Zoroastrianism had been the dominant religion of the Sasanian Empire, and fire temples dotted the Iranian plateau. The Zoroastrian clergy held significant influence in Sasanian society, and Zoroastrianism was closely tied to the legitimacy of the Sasanian monarchy. With the arrival of Islam, this religious order was upended. Islam, a monotheistic faith that emphasized the unity of God, Allah, the prophethood of Muhammad, and the importance of the Quran as divine revelation, quickly spread throughout the newly conquered territories. The process of Islamization in Iran was gradual and complex. In the immediate aftermath of the conquest, the Arab rulers allowed a degree of religious tolerance, particularly for Zoroastrians, Jews, and Christians, who were recognized as people of the Book, or Al-Kitab, under Islamic law. These communities were permitted to continue practicing their faiths in exchange for paying a special tax known as the jizya. However, over time, social, economic, and political pressures incentivized many Iranians to convert to Islam. Converts were often exempt from paying the jizya, and conversion to Islam opened up new opportunities for social mobility and participation in the Islamic administration. While many Iranians embraced Islam, the Zoroastrian community did not disappear overnight. Zoroastrianism continued to be practiced in certain regions, particularly in more remote areas of Iran, and Zoroastrians maintained their religious traditions and fire temples. Over the centuries, however, the Zoroastrian community gradually diminished in size, and many Zoroastrians eventually migrated to India, where they established the Parsi community, which remains active to this day. Despite the decline of Zoroastrianism, its cultural and religious legacy continued to influence Iranian society, particularly in the realm of ethics, cosmology, and festivals such as Nowruz, the Persian New Year. The Arab conquest also brought significant changes to the political and social structure of Iran. The old Sasanian aristocracy was largely displaced, and new Arab rulers, appointed by the caliphate, took control of the governance of the region. The Umayyad and later the Abbasid caliphs established their own administrative systems in Iran, often building on the existing Persian bureaucratic infrastructure. Persian officials and scholars were highly valued for their expertise in administration, finance, and governance, and many served in high-ranking positions within the Islamic Caliphate. This blending of Persian and Arab administrative practices contributed to the development of a sophisticated and effective system of governance that would influence Islamic empires for centuries to come. One of the most significant consequences of the Arab conquest was the emergence of Persian as a major literary and cultural language within the Islamic world. Although Arabic became the dominant language of administration, religion, and law, Persian culture remained resilient and influential. Over time, Persian reasserted itself as a literary and intellectual language, particularly during the Abbasid period and the rise of the Iranian dynasties such as the Samanids in the 9th and 10th centuries. The Persian language, now infused with Arabic vocabulary and Islamic concepts, became the vehicle for a remarkable flowering of literature, poetry, philosophy, and science. This cultural renaissance, 
known as the Persianization of the Islamic world, produced some of the most celebrated figures in Persian history, including poets such as Ferdowsi, Rumi, and Hafez, as well as scholars and scientists like Avicenna, Ibn Sina, and Al-Farabi. The re-emergence of Persian as a cultural language also coincided with the rise of Iranian nationalism and a renewed sense of Iranian identity. While the early Islamic period saw a fusion of Arab and Persian cultures, many Iranians began to emphasize their distinct cultural heritage, particularly through the preservation of pre-Islamic traditions and the celebration of Persian history. The epic poem Shahnameth, the Book of Kings, written by the poet Ferdowsi in the 10th century, played a key role in this cultural revival. The Shahnameth recounts the mythological and historical history of Iran from the creation of the world to the Arab conquest, emphasizing the heroism, wisdom, and resilience of the Persian people. It became a symbol of Iranian pride and cultural identity, helping to preserve Persian traditions in the face of foreign rule. Despite the profound changes brought about by the Arab conquest and the spread of Islam, Iran managed to retain much of its cultural identity. The centuries following the conquest saw the fusion of Persian and Islamic elements, creating a unique and vibrant civilization that would have a lasting impact on the broader Islamic world. Persian culture, literature, art, and architecture became integral to the development of Islamic civilization, and Iran would continue to play a central role in the intellectual, spiritual, and political life of the Muslim world. The introduction of Islam also had a lasting impact on Iranian religious thought and spirituality. While Sunni Islam became the dominant sect in the early Islamic period, Iran would eventually become the heartland of Shia Islam, a significant development in the region's religious and political history. The split between Sunni and Shia Islam, which originated from disputes over the rightful succession to the leadership of the Muslim community after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, became particularly pronounced in Iran during the Safavid period in the 16th century. However, the seeds of Shia Islam were sown much earlier, and the martyrdom of figures like Imam Hussein at the Battle of Karbala in 680 CE resonated deeply with the Iranian people, contributing to the development of a distinct Shia identity. The Arab conquest and the introduction of Islam to Iran represent a period of profound transformation. Although the fall of the Sasanian Empire marked the end of Zoroastrian dominance, the cultural and religious traditions of Iran remained strong and adaptable. The fusion of Persian and Islamic elements created a rich and enduring civilization that would continue to shape the history of Iran and the broader Islamic world for centuries to come. The legacy of this period is still visible today, as Iran remains a center of Islamic culture, thought, and scholarship while also preserving its unique Persian heritage. Part 8. The Evolution of the Persian Language The Persian language, known as Farsi, has a long and complex history that spans several millennia, evolving through various stages and influenced by numerous cultures and languages. The evolution of the Persian language, commonly referred to as Farsi, represents a linguistic journey that has profoundly shaped the identity and culture of the Iranian people. Its origins can be traced back to the Indo-Iranian branch of the Indo-European language family, and it has undergone significant transformations through three major phases, Old Persian, Middle Persian, and Modern Persian. Each phase of the language's development was marked by significant historical and cultural changes, with Persian evolving through various influences, including those of Greek, Arabic, and Turkic languages. Despite these changes, Persian has retained its core linguistic structure, and it remains a vital language of literature, governance, and communication in Iran and surrounding regions. The earliest form of the Persian language, known as Old Persian, emerged during the Achaemenid period, circa 550 to 330 BCE. Old Persian was the language of the Achaemenid court and administration, and it was used primarily for royal inscriptions, official decrees, and monumental architecture. The most famous example of Old Persian is the inscription at Behistun, commissioned by King Darius I, which records his rise to power and the achievements of his reign. Old Persian was written in a cuneiform script, a writing system adapted from earlier Mesopotamian scripts, and its use was largely confined to formal and official context. As a language of empire, Old Persian served as a unifying medium for the vast and diverse Achaemenid territories, 
which stretched from the Indus Valley to the eastern Mediterranean. After the fall of the Achaemenid Empire to Alexander the Great in 330 BCE and the subsequent Hellenistic period, Old Persian began to evolve into what is known as Middle Persian or Pahlavi. This transition occurred during the Parthian, 247 BCE, 224 CE, and Sasanian, 224 to 651 CE, dynasties, both of which played a significant role in the development of Persian culture and language. Middle Persian was the language of the Sasanian Empire, and it became the official language of administration, religion, and literature. Unlike Old Persian, which had been written in cuneiform, Middle Persian was written in a script derived from the Aramaic alphabet, reflecting the influence of earlier Semitic languages on Persian. This new script was more adaptable and allowed for a greater range of expression in written text. Middle Persian was also the language of Zoroastrianism, the state religion of the Sasanian Empire. The sacred texts of Zoroastrianism, including the Avesta, were composed in Avestan, a closely related language, but Middle Persian was used for religious commentaries, administrative documents, and literary works. The Zoroastrian priesthood played a crucial role in the preservation and transmission of Middle Persian, ensuring that it remained the dominant language of Iran during the Sasanian period. However, the Arab conquest of Iran in the 7th century CE and the introduction of Islam brought about significant changes to the linguistic landscape of the region. With the rise of the Islamic Caliphate and the spread of Arabic, Middle Persian gradually began to lose its status as the official language of administration. Arabic became the language of governance, religion, and scholarship across much of the Islamic world, including Iran. However, Persian did not disappear. Instead, it underwent a process of transformation and adaptation that resulted in the emergence of modern Persian. This new phase of the Persian language, which began around the 9th century CE, was heavily influenced by Arabic, both in terms of vocabulary and script. Modern Persian adopted the Arabic script, which is still used to write Persian today, and incorporated a large number of Arabic loanwords, particularly in the realms of science, philosophy, and religion. Despite these influences, Persian retained its distinct grammatical structure and continued to serve as a vital medium for literary and cultural expression. The emergence of modern Persian coincided with a cultural and literary renaissance in Iran, particularly during the period of the Samanid dynasty, 819-999 CE. The Samanids, an Iranian dynasty that ruled in northeastern Iran and Central Asia, were great patrons of Persian literature and culture, and they played a key role in the revival of the Persian language as a literary language. One of the most important figures of this period was the poet Ferdowsi, whose epic poem Shahnameth, The Book of Kings, is considered one of the greatest masterpieces of Persian literature. Written in modern Persian, that Shahnameth tells the mythological and historical history of Iran, from the creation of the world to the fall of the Sasanian Empire, and it played a crucial role in preserving the Persian language and cultural identity during a time of Arab dominance. Ferdos's work, composed almost entirely in Persian with minimal Arabic influence, became a symbol of Iranian pride and a testament to the resilience of the Persian language. The flourishing of Persian literature during the Islamic Golden Age was not limited to epic poetry. Persian became the language of choice for poets, scholars, and philosophers across the Islamic world, from Iran to India. The works of poets such as Rumi, Sadi, and Hulfez are celebrated not only in Iran but throughout the Persian-speaking world and beyond. These poets wrote in a lyrical and mystical style that explored themes of love, spirituality, and the nature of existence, and their works continue to be widely read and studied today. Persian also became a key language of scholarship and science, particularly in fields such as medicine, astronomy, and mathematics. Scholars like Avicenna, Ibn Sina, and Albiruni, who wrote in both Arabic and Persian, made groundbreaking contributions to knowledge that would influence both the Islamic and European worlds for centuries. The Persian language also played a central role in the administration and culture of the various Islamic empires that followed the Arab conquest. During the Safavid period, 1501-1736, Persian was the official language of the empire, and it remained a prestigious language of court and culture in the Ottoman and Mughal empires as well. In India, 
Persian was the language of administration and literature under the Mughal rulers, and it continued to be used as a literary and scholarly language long after the decline of the Mughal Empire. The spread of Persian across such a vast and diverse region helped to establish it as one of the most influential languages in the Islamic world. In the modern era, Persian remains the official language of Iran, as well as parts of Afghanistan and Tajikistan, where it is known as Dari and Tajik, respectively. The Persian-speaking world has a rich and diverse literary tradition that spans more than two millennia, and Persian continues to be a vital language of poetry, philosophy, and scholarship. The legacy of Persian literature, particularly the works of poets like Rumi and Hulfez, has transcended national and linguistic boundaries, with their writings being translated into numerous languages and gaining international recognition. Today, Persian is spoken by more than 100 million people worldwide, and it continues to evolve and adapt to the changing cultural and political landscape of the region. The resilience and adaptability of the Persian language throughout its long history is a testament to the strength of Iranian culture and identity. Despite the many conquests and cultural influences that Iran has experienced, from the Greeks and Arabs to the Mongols and Turks, Persian has remained a constant, serving as a vehicle for the expression of Iranian thought, values, and creativity. The evolution of Persian from old to middle to modern forms reflects the broader historical changes that have shaped Iran over the centuries, and it continues to play a central role in the cultural and intellectual life of the Iranian people. The Persian language's ability to absorb and integrate influences from other cultures while maintaining its own distinct identity has allowed it to endure as one of the great world languages. Whether in the form of epic poetry, mystical philosophy, or scientific scholarship, Persian has contributed enormously to the cultural and intellectual heritage of humanity. As modern Iran continues to engage with the global community, Persian remains a powerful symbol of the country's rich history and its ongoing contributions to the world of literature and ideas. Part 9. Iran's Cultural Renaissance The story of Iran's cultural renaissance is one of resilience and revival, where centuries of foreign domination, internal challenges, and profound political changes have not been able to extinguish the flame of Iranian creativity and identity. Iran's cultural renaissance is a testament to the enduring strength of its civilization, a resurgence that took place despite invasions, foreign rule, and significant political and religious shifts. Throughout its long history, Iran has experienced periods of great upheaval, from the Arab conquest to the Mongol invasions, and later, the rise of the Safavids, who established Shia Islam as the state religion. Yet, in each of these periods, the Iranian people found ways to preserve and revitalize their rich cultural heritage, creating a tapestry of literature, art, architecture, and intellectual achievement that continues to influence the world today. This renaissance is not a single event but rather a series of cultural reawakenings, each marked by the reassertion of Iranian identity and the flowering of new artistic and intellectual movements. The period following the Mongol invasions in the 13th century saw one of the most remarkable cultural revivals in Iranian history. After the devastation wrought by Genghis Khan and his successors, Iran lay in ruins, its cities destroyed and its people scattered. The Mongol invasions had caused immense destruction to the infrastructure, economy, and cultural institutions of the region, leaving a deep scar on the Iranian landscape. However, rather than succumbing to despair, the Iranian people began to rebuild. Under the Ilkhanate, a Mongol dynasty that ruled Persia from the mid-13th to the 14th century, Iran witnessed a cultural and intellectual revival that drew on both Persian traditions and Mongol patronage. The Ilkhan rulers, particularly Ghazan Khan and his successors, embraced Persian culture and helped to restore many of the institutions that had been destroyed during the invasions. Persian became the language of the court, and the Mongol rulers patronized Iranian scholars, poets, and artists, leading to a flourishing of literature, science, and architecture. One of the most significant figures of this period was the historian and scholar Rashid al-Din, whose Jamie al tawarik Compendium of Chronicles, is considered one of the most important works of historical writing in the medieval Islamic world. Rashid al-Din's work, written in Persian and Arabic, chronicles the history of the Mongol Empire as well as the broader history of the Islamic and Persian worlds, 
preserving a wealth of knowledge about the political and cultural developments of the time. This period of Mongol rule also saw a revival in Persian literature, with poets and scholars producing works that reflected the resilience of Iranian culture in the face of adversity. Poets like Sadi and Hulfez emerged during this era, their works filled with themes of love, loss, and the search for truth and meaning in a world that had been torn apart by conflict. Sadi's Gulistan, The Rose Garden, and Bustan, The Orchard, are two of the most celebrated works of Persian prose, blending moral teachings with wit and wisdom, while Hulfez Divan, Collected Poems, has become one of the most cherished collections of Persian poetry, known for its lyrical beauty and mystical depth. These literary achievements are not only expressions of artistic creativity but also reflections of the enduring values of Persian culture, the love of beauty, the quest for spiritual enlightenment, and the celebration of life's fleeting moments. The cultural renaissance that followed the Mongol period laid the groundwork for the rise of the Safavid dynasty in the 16th century, which would herald another era of cultural flourishing. The Safavids, under the leadership of Shah Ismail I, established a unified Iranian state and made Shia Islam the official religion of the empire. This religious shift had profound implications for Iranian identity, as it distinguished Iran from its sunny neighbors and reinforced a sense of national unity based on a shared religious and cultural heritage. The Safavid period is often seen as a golden age of Persian art, architecture, and literature, with the capital city of Isfahan becoming one of the most magnificent cultural centers of the Islamic world. Isfahan, under the rule of Shah Abbas the Great, became the jewel of the Safavid Empire, renowned for its stunning mosques, palaces, gardens, and bazaars. The city's architectural masterpieces, such as the Shah Mosque, the Ali Kapu Palace, and the Chehel Sotun Pavilion, exemplify the grandeur and sophistication of Safavid art and design. The use of intricate tilework, calligraphy, and geometric patterns in these buildings reflects the deep spiritual and aesthetic values of Persian culture, where beauty is seen as a reflection of divine order and harmony. The Safavid period also saw the flourishing of Persian miniature painting, a highly detailed and colorful art form that illustrated scenes from literature, history, and everyday life. Artists such as Reza Obossi became famous for their delicate brushwork and attention to detail, creating works that captured the elegance and refinement of Safavid society. In addition to its artistic achievements, the Safavid period was also a time of significant intellectual and scientific development. Persian scholars and philosophers made important contributions to fields such as astronomy, medicine, and theology, building on the knowledge of earlier Islamic and Persian thinkers. The Safavid rulers were great patrons of learning, establishing madrasas, religious schools, and libraries where scholars could study and debate the great questions of their time. This intellectual climate fostered a spirit of inquiry and innovation, with Persian scholars engaging with the latest developments in science and philosophy from both the Islamic world and Europe. While the Safavid period is often remembered for its cultural and intellectual achievements, it was also a time of religious consolidation. The establishment of Shia Islam as the state religion helped to shape the religious identity of Iran in a way that would have lasting consequences. The Safavid rulers promoted the construction of Shia shrines and the dissemination of Shia theology, which became deeply ingrained in Iranian religious life. This religious identity would continue to influence Iranian politics and culture long after the fall of the Safavid dynasty, and it remains a defining feature of Iranian society to this day. The fall of the Safavid empire in the early 18th century did not mark the end of Iran's cultural renaissance. Even during periods of political instability, foreign invasion, and internal strife, the cultural achievements of Iran continued to thrive. The Qajar dynasty, which ruled Iran from the late 18th century to the early 20th century, saw a renewed interest in Persian art, literature, and architecture, with a particular emphasis on reviving the classical traditions of the Safavid and earlier periods. The Qajar period also witnessed the emergence of new forms of cultural expression, particularly in the realm of literature and the performing arts. One of the most significant developments during the Qajar period was the rise of modern Persian literature. Writers and poets such as Nima Yushij and Ahmed Shamlu helped to pioneer a new literary movement that sought to bridge the gap between traditional Persian poetry and the modern world. 
these writers experimented with new forms of expression, using free verse and modern themes to explore the complexities of contemporary Iranian society. At the same time, the Kaja period saw the growth of theater and performance art in Iran, with traditional forms of storytelling, such as tazia, religious drama, becoming popular among both urban and rural audiences. These performances often depicted scenes from the lives of religious figures and historical events, blending drama, music, and poetry to create a uniquely Iranian form of theatrical expression. The modern cultural renaissance in Iran continued into the 20th century, particularly after the establishment of the Pahlavi dynasty in 1925. Under the Pahlavi kings, Reza Shah and Mohammad Reza Shah, Iran underwent a period of modernization and westernization, with significant investments in education, infrastructure, and the arts. The Pahlavi rulers sought to promote a sense of national pride by emphasizing Iran's ancient heritage, particularly the achievements of the Achaemenid and Sasanian empires. This period saw the construction of museums, theaters, and cultural institutions, as well as the promotion of Persian literature, cinema, and visual arts. One of the most influential cultural movements of this period was the Iranian New Wave Cinema, which emerged in the 1960s and 1970s. Filmmakers such as Abbas Khairostami and Dariush Merjui gained international acclaim for their innovative storytelling and exploration of social and philosophical themes. These films, which often focused on the struggles of ordinary people in modern Iranian society, reflected the tensions between tradition and modernity, offering a window into the complexities of life in contemporary Iran. The New Wave movement not only revitalized Iranian cinema but also positioned Iran as a major cultural force in the global film industry. Despite the political turmoil of the late 20th century, including the Islamic Revolution of 1979 and the Iran-Iraq War, Iran's cultural renaissance continued. The revolution brought significant changes to Iranian society, particularly in the realm of religious and political life, but it also sparked a new wave of artistic and intellectual creativity. Iranian filmmakers, writers, poets, and artists continued to produce works that engaged with the changing social and political landscape, often addressing themes of identity, faith, and resistance. Today, Iran's cultural renaissance remains a vibrant and dynamic force, with Iranian artists, writers, and thinkers continuing to make significant contributions to global culture. Persian literature, cinema, and visual arts are celebrated not only within Iran but around the world, and the legacy of Iran's rich cultural history continues to inspire new generations of creators. This ongoing cultural revival is a testament to the resilience of the Iranian people and their ability to adapt, innovate, and preserve their cultural heritage in the face of adversity. Part 10. Contemporary Iran, a nation of diversity and resilience. In the modern era, Iran has emerged as a nation of remarkable diversity and resilience. In the modern era, Iran stands as a nation of profound cultural diversity and resilience, shaped by a long history of conquests, empires, and political upheavals. Today, Iran is home to a wide range of ethnic groups, languages, and religious communities, making it one of the most culturally rich and complex countries in the Middle East. The modern Iranian identity is a product of centuries of interaction between Persian, Arab, Turkic, and Central Asian influences, all of which have left indelible marks on the country's culture, politics, and society. Despite the challenges Iran has faced over the years, from foreign invasions to internal revolutions, the Iranian people have consistently demonstrated their capacity to adapt, innovate, and preserve their cultural heritage. One of the key aspects of Iran's cultural diversity is its multi-ethnic composition. While the majority of Iranians identify as Persian, the country is also home to significant ethnic minorities, including Azeris, Kurds, Arabs, Baloch, Turkmen, and Lurs. Each of these groups has its own distinct language, culture, and traditions, contributing to the rich tapestry of Iranian society. Azeris, for instance, are a Turkic-speaking group concentrated in the northwestern region of Iran, and they have played a significant role in Iranian politics and culture throughout history. Similarly, the Kurdish population in western Iran has maintained its own unique cultural identity, 
with a long tradition of oral literature, music, and dance. Despite the diversity of these groups, there has been a strong sense of national unity in Iran, fostered by a shared history and a common cultural heritage. Religion is another major factor that contributes to the diversity and complexity of Iranian society. While the vast majority of Iranians are adherents of Shia Islam, Iran is also home to a number of other religious communities, including Sunni Muslims, Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians, and Baha'is. Shia Islam, which became the dominant faith in Iran during the Safavid period in the 16th century, plays a central role in the country's national identity and political structure. The significance of Shia Islam in Iran is reflected in the country's religious festivals, rituals, and governance, with the Iranian Revolution of 1979 solidifying the role of Shia clerics in the leadership of the country. However, Iran's religious minorities, particularly Christians, Jews, and Zoroastrians, have long histories in the region and continue to practice their faiths openly, though they face varying degrees of legal and social restrictions. One of the most striking aspects of contemporary Iranian culture is its ability to balance tradition with modernity. Iranian society is deeply rooted in its ancient Persian heritage, with a strong emphasis on family values, hospitality, and respect for tradition. Festivals such as Nowruz, the Persian New Year, remain important cultural celebrations that bring together Iranians of all backgrounds to celebrate the renewal of life and the arrival of spring. The rich literary tradition of Iran, from classical poets like Hulfez and Rumi to modern writers like Simin Danishvar and Mahmoud Dalat Abadi, continues to inspire and resonate with contemporary audiences. At the same time, Iran has embraced modernity in many areas, particularly in the fields of science, technology, and the arts. Iranian filmmakers, for instance, have gained international acclaim for their innovative storytelling and social commentary, with directors like Abbas Khairostami and Asghar Farhadi earning global recognition for their work. The resilience of the Iranian people is perhaps most evident in their ability to navigate the political and social challenges of the modern world. The 20th century was a period of profound change for Iran, marked by the fall of the Qajar dynasty, the rise of the Pahlavi monarchy, the nationalization of Iran's oil industry under Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh, and ultimately, the Islamic Revolution of 1979. Each of these events had a significant impact on Iranian society, reshaping its political landscape and forcing the Iranian people to adapt to new realities. The Islamic Revolution, in particular, brought about sweeping changes to the governance of the country, establishing an Islamic Republic based on the principles of Shia Islam and the leadership of Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. While the revolution initially sparked enthusiasm among many Iranians, particularly those who sought to challenge the Pahlavi regime's authoritarian rule and its alignment with Western powers, it also led to new forms of repression and isolation. Following the revolution, Iran faced a series of challenges, including the Iran-Iraq War, 1980-1988, which devastated much of the country's infrastructure and economy. Despite these hardships, the Iranian people showed remarkable resilience, rebuilding their country in the aftermath of the war and finding ways to thrive under difficult circumstances. Iran's economy, heavily reliant on oil exports, has had to contend with international sanctions and political isolation, particularly in recent decades. Yet, the Iranian people have continued to innovate, developing a robust domestic industry and making advances in science, technology, and the arts. Iranian scientists have made significant contributions in fields such as medicine, nuclear energy, and space exploration, while the country's artists and filmmakers continue to gain international acclaim for their creativity and vision. Iran's youth, which makes up a large proportion of the population, plays a crucial role in shaping the future of the country. Young Iranians are highly educated, with a strong emphasis on science, engineering, and the humanities in the country's education system. Despite the social and political restrictions they face, particularly in areas such as freedom of expression and gender equality, young Iranians are finding new ways to express themselves and engage with the wider world. The rise of social media and digital technology has opened up new spaces for dialogue, creativity, and activism, 
allowing Iran's younger generation to connect with global movements and push for change within their own society. Many young Iranians are also deeply committed to preserving their cultural heritage, while at the same time advocating for greater political freedoms, gender equality, and economic opportunities. In the global context, Iran remains a key player in regional and international affairs, with its complex relationship with both Western and neighboring countries. Iran's geopolitical importance, its vast natural resources, and its strategic location in the Middle East make it a country that cannot be easily overlooked. Despite decades of economic sanctions and political isolation, Iran has maintained its influence in the region, particularly through its alliances with groups in Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria. The Iranian government's foreign policy, particularly its stance on issues such as nuclear development, has been a source of tension with Western powers, but it has also strengthened Iran's role as a regional power. Culturally, Iran continues to be a global center for art, literature, and intellectual thought. Persian culture, with its deep roots in poetry, philosophy, and spirituality, continues to inspire people around the world. Iranian filmmakers, musicians, and writers are celebrated not only in Iran but also internationally, with many winning prestigious awards and gaining recognition for their contributions to global culture. The resilience and creativity of Iranian artists and intellectuals, despite the political and social constraints they face, demonstrate the enduring vitality of Iranian culture. Iran's ability to maintain its cultural identity while engaging with the modern world is a reflection of its long history of adaptation, innovation, and survival. In conclusion, contemporary Iran is a nation of immense diversity and resilience, shaped by its ancient heritage, its encounters with foreign powers, and its ongoing engagement with the modern world. The Iranian people, despite the challenges they face, continue to draw on their rich cultural traditions to navigate the complexities of the present and to shape the future of their country. As Iran moves forward, its unique blend of tradition and modernity, as well as its cultural and intellectual contributions, will continue to play a central role in its identity and its place in the world. From the ancient Persian Empire to the modern Islamic Republic, Iran's story is one of endurance, creativity, and a deep connection to its past, all of which ensure that the country remains a key player on the global stage. As we conclude this journey through the origins of the Iranians, we hope you have gained deeper insights into their incredible history and enduring legacy. Thank you for joining us on History Forge. Be sure to subscribe for more stories that bring the past to life and reveal humanity's rich heritage.